That's the eighth annual Vermont Antiques Series. And new this year is a vintage snowboard demo, which we are going to get started with any very shortly right out here. I am very pleased to welcome Paul Grace, who most of you know as the Lizard of Reading. Um, Paul was the founder of the National Snow Surfer Championship, which he will tell you about. And if he brought the vintage boards, we're going to give you a little information about them, and then we are going to invite anyone who wants to try it out to the hill. So thank you for coming. Hopefully you'll stay with the course like the race and the band, and come back with the race tomorrow. And here's Paul. Thank you, Meredith. Uh, it's pretty amazing, 29 years ago to the day, February 12th, uh, Suicide Six gave me an opportunity to host the first national snow surfing championships. Uh, the sport wasn't even known as snowboarding yet. And we held it up on the face, it was a two-day event. We had 125 riders from all across the United States and Canada that showed up, much to Suicide Six's surprise. And uh, by the end of the weekend, we recorded speeds of 60 miles an hour. And 29 years ago, we didn't have bindings. There were no snowboard boots. It was pretty elementary, so it was a but a changing event for the sport, we learned what we were doing wrong, and I think the ski areas realized that, hey, there's some potential here to sell some more lift days. So anyhow, we're here today to, uh, on behalf of the Vermont Ski and Snowboard Museum, and I brought these two boards because these two items were pretty influential. If you've ever heard of a snurfer, the snurfer was the very first product that was commercially produced to surf on the snow. And uh, this baby right here was the super pro racing model. And you literally held onto the rope with one hand, and you stood on these white pads, either right foot or left foot forward, and you held on. And uh, that's all we had was that little metal stick and nerves to get down the hill. So if you happen to have one of these in your barn or up in grandma's attic, put it on eBay, it's worth a ton of money. The second item that I brought was developed in the early 80s and it was way ahead of its time. The, the ski industry still was not very responsive to allowing snowboarding on their slopes. They had liability concerns. Uh, as you can see from the snurfer, there was nothing to keep you on the board if you fell off the board and go shooting down the hill. So this product we developed with a ski brake. With you would. You would step on this before you put your foot into the bindings, and that would bring up the ski brake. So when you fell off, that would come out and stop the board from sliding. We purposely developed the two ski design, which looks like a snowboard cut down the middle. And we put a, snow, a skateboard deck on the top, so you literally ride this like a skateboard. All you do is put your feet up here, the deck tilts, and when you tilt the deck, the skis were parabolic shaped. We were years ahead of the time before parabolic skis came out. So the thing would carve right and left by itself. Um, so, pretty outrageous. There's still nothing like it on the market. Uh, this snowboard related. So we're going to shortly here, we just have a very simple run out course. Everybody's invited if you'd like to come up, uh, try one of these items. I believe some people showed up with their own antique boards and of course we would like to have those on display as well. So we're grateful you're all here. The bar is full. The kitchen's working. So let's go snurfing, baby. Thanks for coming out.